Charlie. Welcome back to Guitar Wishes and your Guitar Wish of the Day. I'm really excited about this one. This is an interview that I did with a gentleman named Lance Guest. That's right, the actor from the 80s. He did some really cool movies back in the day. Last Starfighter, Halloween 2, Jaws Revenge. Some really, really cool movies. If you don't know Lance's stuff, go check him out on IMDb and YouTube and uh, you'll remember him, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but he actually sat down with me. We did a, a Zoom interview about well, some of those movies, but also mainly about music and his love for music. Uh, he was in a play called The Million Dollar Quartet. He's going to tell you all about that. Check it out. Here we go. What's happening? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm a little hot. Really? How's, how are things up in California, man? A little toasty here. Is it really? Thank you, honey. We uh, couldn't figure out how to get to the... You just got it, right? You just... Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry about the mix-up, but we couldn't uh, we couldn't go to Zoom and find you. Oh, it's no problem, man. No problem. Yeah, we uh, we there's different ways to do that invite, and so okay. we went through it. And uh, yeah, man. Uh, so uh, so tell me about things. Well, first off, let me just for everybody who's watching, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce my guest today. This is Mr. Lance Guess, uh, Jack of all trades, has done it all, <laughs> and um, I got to tell you, man. Uh, it's an honor to talk to you. Uh, as a kid, I got to tell you, some of my favorite movies growing up, we're not going to really hit on a lot of the movie stuff today. We're going to talk music mainly, but uh, man, you were instrumental in my childhood. So my favorite <laughs> movies, I'm telling you. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure you hear that quite a, quite frequently. Well, what's what's interesting is that, um, you know, the, the movie business is uh, kind of, they, they kind of, you know, make things happen. And, uh, when we first made the movie, it, it didn't it didn't have great numbers like box office numbers at all. Right, and you're talking about Starfighter. Last Starfighter. It just sort of happened. Yeah, Last Starfighter. Sorry. Um, it just sort of happened, you know. And and uh, you know, three weeks later, it was gone. It was gone from L.A. So we we I just kind of like oh, okay, well uh, let's try something else. I'll tell you about that soon. My my follow up movie was something you might be interested in. Anyways. Um, so then, uh, you know, my family saw it and my friends saw it and everything, but nobody, I didn't, you know, the, but the only place that I did see it, I would go to places across the country that wasn't LA and everybody saw the movie. Like right. everybody had seen the movie. And over the next 30 years, <laughs> everybody has seen the movie. And it's just so funny that like outside of Hollywood, it's, you know, I'm a thing. <laughs> but not in Hollywood. Remember to leave your career. by the Star League, well, well, bend the frontier. Now, are you ready? This is it. Here we go. Charge! <laughs> well, now, you, you had some success out there. You had some uh, some great movies, man. And uh, but yeah, we'll touch on those. But you're originally from Saratoga, right? Saratoga, California. Yeah. Yeah, and I saw where your uh, your dad was a Navy pilot. Uh, any any dreams of joining the military? No, not really. I, I mean, I used to say to my, <laughs> we weren't that interested. There were three of us uh, boys, and none of us were interested in uh, cars or tennis or or fighter piloting. <laughs> um, but he was, you know, he was like in the reserve and everything. And he went to after World War II. He went to you know, Cuba when they had to do the thing in 62. And, and uh, he, I remember when in 1979, when the Russians invaded Afghanistan, we, uh, we, I was the first year that had to sign up for the draft, you know, that had to register for the draft. Sure. And, and um, you know, I wasn't too crazy about it, but uh, I said to my dad, I said, well, boy, if they call me, if I'm going to do it, I, you know, I want to be a pilot. And he just looked at me and was like, yeah, I don't think you should do that. <laughs> You're more of the USO show guy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find yourself an entertainer at an early age? I, I know you started playing guitar at 10, but uh, as, a, yeah. Yeah, as a kid, were you an entertainer? Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of just, I was just a ham, you know. I just, you know, I was always getting in trouble in school trying to, I try to make people laugh and, you know, make faces. And I used to memorize, like, uh, comedy records and, you know, uh, just movies and things like that. And oh, then yeah. I would regurgitate it for anybody who would listen. And 
Um, and I like like songs. I like songs, but I like funny songs mostly. Mm -hmm. and I enjoyed music, but I mostly was the kind of guy that liked, you know, Arlo Guthrie or you know, whatever. They liked the funny Bob Dylan songs. And, right. Right. Now, when you when you first started to learn to play guitar, was there music in the house? Uh, what prompted you to pick up the guitar and, and uh, take a song? Um, my friend, I have a friend. He's a really very, very good guitar player. His name's Michael Gurley. And he went to fourth grade with me. He moved to town when we were in fourth grade. And he, at the, some sleepover, we're 10 years old, and he picked up, his, he brought his guitar to the sleepover, and he starts cranking out all these Beatles songs. And I'm like, how do you know that? You know, <laughs> so I was just totally unbelievably transfixed. I was like, how do you know how to do that? How, how, you know, I thought only the Beatles could do that. Yeah. And there, there was Mike just, you know, knocking them out. So he taught me to play when we were like in fifth grade. Wow. Did so, you learn acoustic or electric? Pardon? Acoustic or electric? Uh, well, it was mostly uh, acoustic then because electric was, we didn't, I mean, I didn't have any money to buy electric. Electric guitars were expensive. <laughs> we had like a, a friend of mine had like a Gemco guitar, you know, that has a, you know, just a, but they were kind of cool too because they were made in the mid to late 60s. So they made all the same material, but, you know, wasn't a, wasn't that well made. They're all bolt on necks and stuff, but. Oh, yeah. Still, you know. Oh, absolutely. And my dad like hooked it up to his old, he had like a hi-fi that he, you know, he got in like 1952 and he, it was like two hi-fi and he made an amplifier out of it. He stuck a, you know, speaker in the cabinet and it was, you know, it didn't sound great, but at least it made noise. That's right. You know? Yeah, man. So how, how I did you get like, I didn't get a guitar, I didn't get an electric guitar of my own until I was about 35 years old. Really? And now I have, you know, 15 of them, so. Well, uh, how did you how did you balance uh, music and the theater? I mean, did you want to do music first and it kind of fell into theater? Um, what was the original plan? The thing is, is that um, I, I, I basically, as I got to be older, as I started having to make those decisions, which is when you're, you know, 14 or 15, I kind of graduated, gravitated towards the acoustic stuff. I liked uh, Bob Dylan, like I said, and Paul Simon and you know, most of the folkies, Arla Guthrie, and, and uh, uh, I was a big fan of uh, Stephen Stills as well. I was a big, probably Stills Nash, sure. young, mostly Stephen Stills. And I, I kind of just, you know, like I said, my friend Mike was, he's an unbelievable guitar player. And he just, you know, he was in bands and he was, you know, he was, he was the rock star at our school. And I, and I, and I was in his first band, I think, but I was never as good of a player as he, he was, he's a, you know, I'm just, I'm okay, but mm -hmm. he's really, really good. So I'm like, hmm, hmm, I should do something else. So the summer that he asked me to do this gig with him, I was doing like Shakespeare camp, you know? And so I was, you know, dressing up in, you know, tights and flowy shirts and doing, you know, as you like it and stuff. Right. And, uh, and so I would go from band practice to Shakespeare to band practice to Shakespeare. So, so I basically did those two things the summer before I was the summer when I was 15, I did those two things together. And then the next year I just started auditioning for plays at school. And I just, that took all my time. I was right. in, you know, I was in all the plays and I, you know, they, they literally, you rehearsed every single day of the year. One play would close. You, you would just Monday morning, you'd start rehearsal for the next play. Right. And so music just became a, a, a kind of a second hobby, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it was just something I did. You know, I mean, it's a great thing to do when you just need to chill out or, you know, just learn something new. Or, I don't know. I just found it kind of some people meditate, you know, I just liked. But it was mostly, like I said, mostly acoustic. I didn't really know anything about electric instruments until I was, I would say, really in my 30s. Yeah. And I just started buying guitars. And I actually, Mike used to be my roommate when I was uh, in college. And, and uh, his, his uh, share of the rent was due and he didn't have it. So he gave me this amp. And it's one of those old uh, music man from the, you know, those music man, like double duo, they're like 212. Oh, and sure. It's a, they're uh, pretty, it's a pretty good amp. I mean, I know it's half and half, but it's still pretty cool. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. And you <laughs> so know, <laughs> 
I guess you went from there, you know, uh, 1980 rolls around and Halloween two comes out, I guess your first movie. Um, yeah, that- I was in college. I was in college before all that stuff. You know, that was, I was a theater major at UCLA. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, uh, but even, I guess as you're, you're making, uh, starting to make your, your splash in Hollywood, you're going home at night and you're still picking around in guitar, correct? That is true. That is true. And actually for the last few years, I mean, for, for a period of time, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, 60 years old now. So uh, from the time when I was about 35 to about 55, sort of ending with Million Dollar Quartet, I just was obsessed with, obsessed with guitar, obsessed with, I mean, much more than acting. I didn't, I didn't really give a shit about acting. I just, I just would come down here and, you know, wire my amps together like Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, and, uh-huh. you know, I would, I would, you know, try to, make a bunch of noise you know I, I, i'm loud you know i'm not great but i'm loud <laughs> well, i see some cool axes back there I, is that i see a les paul a telly strat uh what, what are you playing mainly these days what, what's your favorite you know, what's your go-to these have all the see that's a that's an old telly that's from like the mid early 70s i think and that les paul's from like 74 i think yeah um there's another telly behind there but it's not an old one um I mostly play the Les Paul because it's the newest one, and they're you know they're really good guitars. <laughs> I don't know I don't know if you know that, <laughs> um, but they're they're good guitars. But like I have another one. I have this. I just totally messed up my wrist, so I can't do much holding. But this is like this was my first electric guitar. My friend Billy Lincoln made it out of like spare parts. Oh wow! But it's a pretty you know it's a pretty it's pretty really fun to play and it's really it's like an unfinished maple neck there and you know live with the bird's eye and the, oh yeah it's beautiful uh, but anyways this is a uh, so that that was the first one i played and then that's the last one i bought the, the less tall mm-hmm. and it's just it's really stock you know it's not i actually need to put better pickups in it because because i think the pickups were like handmade or something because they just we took it apart and it's like, wait, what, what kind of pickups are these? We didn't you know, <laughs> what it was. But I think my philosophy about Les Pauls is that the reason that they're good is because of the age of the wood. You know, that's kind of my right. personal uh, philosophy. I found it newer. When I play newer instruments, it's really hard to find a good new instrument. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I think the reissues, the, um, 335 the red 335s sure. those are really good yeah like those sound really good yeah a lot of the guys a lot of the guys in our shop uh swear by 335s and you know, that is I their... mean, this, the red ones especially i don't know if you do you notice that i've only seen two of them but both of them good friends of mine mike has one and my other friend rob has one mm-hmm. and they're so they're just i don't know they got that skinny neck and they you know play great they really really do uh as far as amps uh, is, did i see a twin back there that is a let's see i'll show you i have way too many amps <laughs> um this right here is the aforementioned uh, music man right there oh yeah see it's a 75 74 or something music man right. and then that's uh that's a new amp but it's a cool one of those vox you know uh ac15s but they're like hand wired or something it's really good oh yeah um i basically just bought it from my friend rob he knows way more about this stuff than i do that's a deluxe reverb back there oh yeah i um, love the deluxe reverb great amp but it's a little weird it's hard to get a clean sound out of it i may have to get some more work done on it and then the below there was an amp that uh my friend rob from in our quartet he basically just gave it to me he was like i you know i i don't need this i used to play harmonica through it and everybody that comes to my house, that's their favorite amp to play through. All the really good guitar players, <laughs> that's what they want to play through. It's a custom, you know, it's a regular custom 30 from, it's a PV, you know, to custom 30, you know. Oh, yeah. You've seen those in the early 90s, I guess. Um, oh, this is really a trip. This this is a trainer that a friend of mine gave me. I don't know, can you tell? Oh, Here, let, me get rid of the, let me get rid of my neon sign, which I always think is silly. Oh shoot! All right, stay there. Okay, this right there. I don't know if you can see that. 
Oh yeah. Those things. Oh, absolutely. So these, you know, I'm sure you've heard about these or have heard them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're, they're kind of boomy, but I took the speakers out. I put like, you know, Celestians in them. I took some speakers out and I, and this friend of mine who makes Snyder amps, his last name is Snyder and out of San Diego. And he just re, he redid it. He, you know, he brought the, the, uh, what is it? The power, basically the power, so he brought the power down to 50. It was like a hundred watt amp and he brought it down to like 50 and right. then reconfigured a lot of the, a lot of the stuff. Right. Um, so it sounds, you know, it sounds like a custom amp, but it's using, you know, uh, decent parts, you know, like those, those amps were made, they were made with good parts. Right. If you want a vintage amp, I, I kind of like the vintage amp stuff. So. Right. So do you have jam nights where guys just come over and everybody picks up something and yeah. starts playing? That's why I do this. That's why I have this here. Yeah. You know, I've got like a string bass upstairs that I bought for my friend Andy. And, uh, you know, it's a, you know, hillbilly bass. It's a doghouse. Oh, yeah. And uh, listen to me. I'm from Saratoga. I'm telling I'm telling the, the North Carolina guy, <laughs> you, know, you know, it's a doghouse bass. <laughs> I spent a bunch of time with uh, Chuck Mead. Uh, he was our music director at uh, Millinar Quartet. I don't know if you know Chuck, mm -mm. but uh, he's uh, he's at he's lived he lives in Nashville and he has all these, you know, all these country terms for. <laughs> <various. laughs> yeah, but well, you you've mentioned uh, Million Dollar Quartet. I wanted to to get into that uh, a pretty heavy. You know, tell me about how that. Uh, came about your involvement in that and the development of million dollar quartet and uh, your your role in that hello i'm johnny, I'm johnny cash, cash. with a friend of mine and she was working for this, the guy who was developing the script, Floyd. And they were, they were starting to do readings of it. And she had come to my house for a jam party, for a Christmas jam party, um, because she was in the play that I was in that year. So it was like, we invite everybody we work with, you know, my wife and I during the year, plus all of our old friends. Yeah. So her name is Megan. And she saw the jam thing and she, they were casting, you know, quartet and they needed they needed somebody tall to play the guitar okay that was the story you got to be tall you got to play the guitar uh okay oh by the way you're playing johnny cash okay that i can do <laughs> <laughs> and then i showed up and i just did johnny cash and you know when i was a kid that was my first record I, i'm not like this one of these people that like live and die for johnny cash i love johnny cash but i'm not right. you know i don't have i don't cover my you know cars and bumper stickers or anything but I, I love johnny cash but but i used to do it as a child i used to sing blame too because it was funny so of course i sang it and right. of course even when i was 10 years old i tried to sound like johnny cash so. now did you ever get the chance to meet johnny i know he died in like oh three um did you ever get a chance to meet him uh i did but but it wasn't it, it, it was like one of those you know I got to go backstage, a friend of mine, Michelle, she, uh, she knew John and Jim, and we went to see the Highwaymen, I think in the late 80s, 80s up at uh, uh, Universal. Mm -hmm. and, and she goes, you wanna go backstage? You know, I mean, I, I, we can go backstage because we got the tickets. I'm like, Shit, hell, hell yeah. So I go there, and he and I had the same height. Uh -huh. He was wearing boots, you know? He was wearing like, so he's probably six, four or something he had those you know those boots with the little heels on them so he just kind of stared over the top of my head like nice to meet you, you know? and he had this like <laughs> his eyes were kind of far off gazing far off and i'm like nice to meet you too john <laughs> and he just kind of like looking around you know and uh and um but who i did meet was uh who i think is an unbelievable stud when it comes to songwriting is chris christopherson oh yeah and so I, I, and I, and he just looked over at me. He's like, Hey, how's it going? And he's playing with all these kids. There's like four or five kids. And he's just kind of like playing with all these kids. Yeah. And I was like, you're the coolest guy in the world. And you said <laughs> hi to me. It's like, so that was my Johnny Cash story. 
<laughs> but he's cool. I mean, I love him. Obviously, everything. Nobody doesn't love Johnny Cash. Oh yeah. Now, uh, when uh, when you did that, I guess that was a J two hundred you were playing. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a bunch of those. I I tried to get them from the production. We had this one guy Eddie who played Elvis, and he just kept digging holes in him. He played really really hard, and he had these like metal thumb picks he played with, and he, it looked like Willie Nelson's guitar. You know, after three months, it looked like that guitar Willie Nelson plays. And uh, so I tried to get that from the production company because you know J two hundred are good guitars. You know, if you yeah. want to spend you know thirty two hundred dollars on them, but right right. And uh, so I I tried to get that. And they're like, oh no no no, we can't we can't sell you that guitar. I'm like, why not? So, do you have one in your collection now? I do not. I do not. Yeah. I mean, I should, because I really liked them. I got, I got very spoiled, you know, because I had all these. I have a lot of guitars, and most of them are not super great guitars. They're they're okay. They're unique and stuff. I don't have like a. I don't have too many like tacky, cheap guitars. I've got some weirdo guitars, and I've got some okay guitars. But like, I played that guitar for four years, and I just got completely spoiled. Yeah, you said, you said production so, had a bunch of them, right? Pardon? You said production had a bunch of them? No, they had they had ones, they had backup guitars, they had ones for different productions, like we did one in Chicago, they had one for the tour, they had one for, we were, I was in the Chicago show and the Broadway show. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I played, I played the same one. I think I had two, I had a backup. So what, the backup we used on promo gigs, like we'd run down to, my God, we always had to go down to Fox News at like, quarter to six in the morning sometimes in the rain you know we'd have to get up no 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 it wasn't quarter to six it was like quarter to four. Oh wow we, and i lived in midtown and i just like ride my bike to fox there's nobody on the road you know you just ride your bike through midtown and go into fox news to be a oh uh, here's the train to come you know <laughs> well you guys did uh letterman too right yeah letterman yeah yeah that yeah. was fun tell me about that experience that was well. That was a one of a kind experience. We, that, that was an all day thing. You know, we we showed up probably two and a half hours early. We had to do all this stuff. We shot it at like four o'clock in the afternoon. And as they say, it's really cold in that theater. They kept it really cold, which is good. I like that. It kind of keeps you from being lazy. <clears throat> but um, that was that was really really exciting. I mean, we 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 probably went to Fox News, you know, eight times. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, okay, well, Don Imus wants to see her. Okay, go down and you know, go down and set up and sing the songs. We, you know, we'd get off and it'd be time for breakfast. You know, we, right. we, we <laughs> but uh, Letterman was uh, that was fun. I mean, they were all really nice to us there, but it was really, you know, cool. I got to meet uh, Larry Gatlin was hung out with us for a while for a couple of weeks when we were out there. He was really a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and um. And uh, but Letterman was just was so fun because we it was such a you've seen the clip it's just a a short you know four minute mashup of some of the most exciting songs in the show and I I gotta say they really did a good job with the way they arranged it and put it together and it was simple but it was flashy and it was just a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Did uh, and was it the Jimmy Fallon show? I believe. We did that as well. Everything we did, we did live. The only thing we didn't do live, because a lot of times people wanted us to play the track, but we mm -hmm. never played the track, including the, both the award shows that we were in. But we had to play the track on the uh, the uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade because it is a track. It's like, it has to be, it's, they, they they make the track first. Sure. You know, right. so they fit everything in, everything's on time. People just, you know, they don't have to, which is smart, you know, otherwise it could be a mess. You have, right. you know, 45 acts and something happens, you know, it's like, you don't want that. So it, they, they, they just cut it together and then they run it and then everybody sings along and obviously it's them singing. But Right. Did you have a favorite song to play as Johnny Cash? Um, I usually play, uh, <clears throat> I can only do Johnny Cash when my voice is okay because, you know, it's, uh, allergy season or whatever dry throat like it just dies oh yeah but when i can do it um still boy named sue oh really and oddly enough that's not really a johnny cash song it's a shell silverstein song mm. but it's the most fun one to to play and i like uh you know get rhythm and i like uh you know uh big river and Folsom prison i like Folsom prison i just 
I did it a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I, now, I probably that was a crowd favorite. Was it? Oh they, yeah, oh yeah. Everybody wants to hear Pulse of Blue. Were, yeah, well, I was going to ask you what was the biggest crowd favorite uh, for each show. Did did it consistently uh, remain one song, or did it change? You know, uh, it's funny. There were some nights when everybody was a Johnny Cash fan. You know, um, we the guy that we had Levi Christ did a uh, whole lot of shaking as Jerry Lee, mm -hmm. and it's it was always killer. I mean, it was always, it was a great song to end on. Um, and then, I mean, Eddie did, uh, uh, when he was Elvis, he did um, obviously Hound Dog, but he also did, uh, let's have a party, let's have a party, you know. Oh, sure. And, uh, God, what was it? God, I can't remember. Brown Eyed Handsome Man, you know. Everybody, it's like every night there was some, there were different fans in the audience. You right. know, some nights they'd go nuts for my bed, you know, or they'd go nuts for 16 tons or they'd go nuts for, you know, uh, Matchbox, you know, mm -hmm. Matchbox. Yeah. It's a great song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so every night, you know, uh, my, bu my buddy Rob did a great version of uh, My Babe. We, we did a mashup of My Babe was was on the original um, on the original recording. I think there was like a couple of fragments of My Babe that Carl Perkins did. And mm -hmm. so we did a matchbox, we did a mashup of a slowed down kind of groovier version of, 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 uh, I'm not, uh, which, my babe, of my babe. And then we cut into 16 tons. So we just kept the same beat going. Some beats, you know, it just had that lopy kind of greasy feel that just cut into a kind of a, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but it was kind of like it was almost like a hip hop version of <laughs> some made out of blood. Oh yeah. Oh, man, so it was very slow, and it wasn't. It wasn't like Tennessee Ernie Ford, you know. It wasn't. But I was going to ask how much digging into the actual archives did you guys do for that? I mean, did you did you get uh, access to everything? As much as we possibly could. I mm -hmm. mean, everybody. The Chuck was a total chuck and uh colin who was the co-writer and the guy who's sort of the he's like a sun uh, rockabilly sun records historian you know he knows all that stuff and they were very very uh sticklers about authenticity and and even if we did an, an unusual um version of it it had to have some basis and there had to be some basis in reality i mean i'm exaggerating when i said we did a hip-hop version it wasn't it was just kind of, of kind of slow and kind of blood soaked you know but it was yeah. but it, it was they were very and i was really glad that there was somebody there that knew all that stuff because when we did our first um our first readings i was one of the only ones that knew how to play that guitar and, and i am by far the least qualified guitar player of that whole group or musician of that whole group. Right. But when we first did readings, when we had different people, a lot of them, they didn't cast musicians, they cast actors. So I was the guy that was like, no, okay, play this. It's this, da, 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 you know, I'd play, show them the Chuck Berry legs or whatever they had to do. And my very limited knowledge, it wasn't like, you know, I know everything, but I, but a lot of the people in the early, 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 workshops we had to sort of make the songs come alive during the play you know it wasn't like songs are supposed to be very organic to the play it's like here let's sing this song bam, bam, and we sing the song and it and it it became more and more polished as we got as we had to get bigger venues in it but originally it was here let's pick up the guitar let's play you know my babe let's play down by the riverside right. and more like what the original event was but obviously the original event was so casual that it was much better to do, you know, more prepared, arranged, kick-ass versions of those songs, which I give Chuck 100% credit to saying that, like, like he really he really did some great versions of those songs. Yeah, and if nobody out there has ever uh, seen any of the clips uh, from uh, the Million Dollar Quartet that we're talking about, they need to get search that stuff out on YouTube and, and really check that out because those are some really killer events and everybody played so well uh, and, and sang so well. It, it, it truly wasn't actually the, uh, the owner of the, the 
Guitar Wishes, the guitar shop that we're mm -hmm. at, and Sound Factory Studios here that I'm sitting in now, uh, he saw it twice. And uh, he, he loved it and uh, took his parents to it and had a great time. And, you know, uh, so I really encourage everybody to go check that stuff out on YouTube. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what about music these days? Uh, are you jumping into anything? Uh, I I haven't been, and I don't know what that is. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, when I was in my, probably my early, early 30s, I was really into like Lyle Lovett, when Lyle Lovett was like really happening. He's still happening, he's still great, but when he was making most of his records in the, in the early to mid 90s, I was really into Lyle Lovett. Um, uh, I, when I was at 13, 14 years old, everybody else was listening to uh, Leonard Skinner and the Allman Brothers. I could care less about them. When I was about 40 years old, that's all I listened to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Skinner, Allman Brothers, Marshall Tucker, Charlie Daniels, you know. Right, right. And actually, when I was in high school, I listened to Charlie Daniels. I was in, my brother gave me a Charlie Daniels record because he thought it was funny. He, you know, but I think Charlie Daniels is kind of funny. He's a Carolinian, right? North Carolinian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie just passed away recently, and uh, he's uh, he was one of a kind. Charlie was. Yeah, yeah uh, he was really quite a quite a talent. Hey, let me ask you: Do you have you ever uh, uh, just taken a leap and tried your hand at songwriting? Um, I, you know, I have, but I, I am a. Let's see, I am very easy on my uh, lead guitar abilities. And I am very critical of my song writing abilities. Like mm -hmm. I will just sit and play lead guitar whether I suck or not, you know. I will play and I will have a great time. But, but songwriting to me, you know, I was introduced at such a young age to such great songwriters that I was for the longest time, for the time when you're supposed to do it in your 20s and stuff, I was, completely intimidated because I just thought, no, I'm not, I, if I can't write songs like Bob Dylan, then why bother, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I, 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 I've written a few and I'm like, oh, that's not so bad, you know? It's right. not too bad. Um, lyrically, I'm better than musically. Not, I'm not really musically, uh, that's not really my, uh, my forte. I can, I can play a, a, a selection of chords. I can play a, you know, a, circuit of chords i can mm -hmm. okay i'll do i'll do every single verse sounds the same you know but that's i'm not i'm not i'm not really gifted in the musical part of songwriting but i can write lyrics i right. just if i don't have good music then i don't you know yeah but i've, I've collaborated a little bit but, you know it's something i just do for fun because i like i said i'm so i'm, I'm not in that league right you know i can the Probably the best thing I can do is sing when I can sing. It's probably the, that's the best, that's the best sort of instrument that I have. I can play guitar, but I'm not as good as most good guitar players. And, you know, I love playing the guitar, but I'm, I'm a very average lead guitar player. You know, you really saw that in Million Dollar Quartet. And, and I hope that someday you'll, you'll get back to that and, uh, and do some more singing. Uh, you know, you got, you do, really do have a great voice. Uh, Thank you. you know, and when I think about, uh, the talent that you've got, you're a great actor. I got to tell you something. Um, Wizard of Loneliness is one of probably my favorite uh, movie that that you've done. That's uh, crazy. How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> you got a set in World War World War Two. If anybody hasn't seen that movie, they need to check it out. It's got uh, Leah Thompson, uh, Dylan Baker. You know, uh, check that movie out if you've not seen it. Everybody, it's called Wizard of Loneliness. Uh, and of course, you did uh, Last Starfighter that we talked about, Halloween too. Um, any more acting coming your way? Not really. I did a couple of short films. I did, you know, I'm kind of, I don't really actively pursue that. People call me up, ask me if I want to do something, and then, then I do it. You know, I, I, I don't. I'm not like, I've been, I've been hitting it since I was 20 years old. Yeah. I mean, professionally, and yeah. that's, you know, I don't. I, I, I've done enough of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask you a question. And I apologize for asking this, but I have to ask it since I've got, I've got you online. Um, I've heard rumors of a sequel to Starfighter. Well, of course I would do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Any truth to that? Um, you know, it's something that uh, I know that the writer has been working on. 
and I know that the writer was partnered up with somebody, um, uh, partnered up with uh, Gary Witta, mm -hmm. I think it's his name. Uh, the, that's the last I heard of it. They were working on a, a script. Um, and it's, you know, they just want to, I guess, make it, make it how they want to make it. And so that I've not gotten any phone calls or anything. So <laughs> well, I'm gonna throw it out. talking about this all the time. I go to, you know, I'll go to like a, you know, I'll do like a convention or something. And, right. and people always ask me and I'm like, well, last I heard. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to throw it out there. I think a uh, Starfighter sequel should happen with you in the lead role. You should write the theme song and sing it. <laughs> and just be a triple threat. <laughs> That's well, they, like, uh, alien karaoke, right? You get down there. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I have to tell you a story I was going to tell you later, but uh, I, want, I want to tell you. Um, when I made that Starfire, uh, like I said, it didn't take off and stuff. So my, my agent at the time knew what I like to do. I like to do uh, low-budget independent films, usually, mm -hmm. and films that are not set in, you know, Hollywood or, you know, this is the actor's life, you know, some crap that you've seen before. And um, this this guy from uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains wrote this script. And I was cast as the lead in this script. And I went out to uh, Galax, Virginia and Mount Airy, North Carolina. And mm -hmm. I went out to those places and we, we recorded music and I was a fiddle player and it was about the Fiddlers Convention out there. And and it was such a beautiful, beautiful movie. And then we got the, they, it was independently financed and the guy just decided, oh, we got to yank the financing on it. So we were out there for like two weeks and I was like, are you kidding me? So it really was something I wanted to do. And I, that was the first time ever, I'd ever seen um, that part of the country, your part of the country. And I just totally fell in love with, with um, the Blue Ridge. And I went back there last year, I did a convention in Tennessee and I, and I'm like, I'm taking an extra week. I want to go back to the Blue Ridge Mountains. So yeah, beautiful area. Galax is, but uh, so, Mount Airy is one of my favorite places in the country. Beautiful, beautiful place. And I'm from Northern California. So it's like, it's not like, it's not like I don't know what a beautiful place looks like, <laughs> but I l absolutely love North Carolina and uh, part of Virginia. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, if the next time you're in this area, man, we would love to have you in the store here. All right. Here, uh, guitar wishes and check out our studio here at Sound Factory. Um, we'll, you know, we'll send a car for you. Whatever we need to do, we'll we'll have a party. We'll, uh, you know, cater it. Whatever we need <laughs> to do. And I, <laughs> I promise you, no Starfighter questions. <laughs> so wait, I got something to show you. I got something along the lines of North Carolina to show you. This right. is the, my buddy Rob was on the tour of Mundar Quartet. I wasn't on it, and he nabbed this poster for me. I don't know if you can see it. Wait. Oh, Durham, North. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Durham, North Carolina. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's about three hours from us here. There you go. Yeah. Man. I, have a, I have a friend in Concord. That's about an hour from you, I guess. huh? That's right. Concord's right near Charlotte. It sure is. Yep. So here we go. I'm going to show you my guitars. Go ahead. These are them. These are, you know, Japanese 1960s, you know. Now, what is that bass there? What is that? Oh, that's my friend Billy made that bass. It's pretty good, but uh, it's not a, it's not a name brand. He just put it together. Right. This is an old, you know, three quarter Music Master from the seventies with punk rock, you know, stickers as you can see. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is an old. Let me see. You see that thing? Wait. You see that weird thing right there? Yeah. What is that? That's a, I think it might be a Tysco or a Framis or a Gemco or something, but it, a friend of mine's dad was in the, like the San Francisco scene back in the sixties right? with, you know, Ken Keys, you know, those guys. Yeah. And uh, he was in a band called the Blue Crumb Truck. Mm -hmm. So like, they were like, you know, with the Jefferson Airplane and the, you know, that whole gang. Sure. And that was his guitar. And uh, his name was uh, Bill Wiley and his, and uh, Ethan is his son. And I went to, college with Ethan. He's a good friend of mine. Good mandolin player. Um, and uh, so Ethan gave me that guitar. It's wow. Like, you have a billion guitars. And then I have all this other stuff. And I have, uh, that's my surfboard from 1964. And uh, Now, do you surf? 
Uh, I did. <laughs> I did until I started doing Millendar Quartet. And I was gone for, I was out of the water for about uh, four years and it was kind of hard to get back in. Now, what is that thing? Oh, that is a funny, uh, funny thing. My friend Seth Curlin gave me that. Um, I think he used to play bass in a punk band and that's got to be from like the 40s or the maybe the 50s. I don't know, but it's just a, it's a really small, you know, one pickup bass. I think it's for like, kids or something i don't know but it's i just it was my base for a while so i That's used it dope. and i don't know if you had this steve mcqueen poster i had this when i was a kid <laughs> it was actually my brother's <laughs> and uh let's see oh wait here's a. Uh, I gotta show you something here these are my that's when we played with little richard i don't know if you can see this we backed up Little Richard at the White House. We played at the White House. Oh, wow. And uh, this is, what's this? Last Starfighter thing. Oh, well. Oh, you Paul McCartney. We got to be on the guest list. We, we saw Paul McCartney. That, that Elvis statue, we had that exact Elvis statue sitting in our front window of Guitar Wishes. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my friend Cameron's. I don't know where he got it. He's a big Elvis fan, and so he sends him Elvis stuff. Yeah. There's, see, I got a couple pictures of John here. Mm hmm Up there, Time Magazine. And uh, I got another one. A friend of mine sent me this. That's, that's why I have this room, so I can put stuff that all these people give me. Right. Um, that's me in the show. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, is, that a, is that a Gibson or Epiphone 335 I just saw? That's a dot. That's an Epiphone. Good guitar. Okay. Those play good too, man. Those dots. Yeah, those are great. Good guitars. That's my friend Cam's. And then this is my piano, which is, let's see if you can, here we go. You see that? Yeah. So that's all. Who can you name on this? Uh... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Lenny Bruce and Woody Guthrie. And that's amazing. Bob and Jerry and Bobby and Charlatans. Yeah. Wow. Let's see if there's any other fun stuff. This is this room just has a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible, man. Uh, do you have like movie memorabilia hanging around too, or is it just not really? No, I don't really. I don't. I don't have a lot of movie memorabilia. I do have a. I do have a Last Starfighter. Uh, uh, West Starfighter um, one sheet from France, and it's cool. But it's 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 um it has my it's it, the opening day on it is my son's birthday, so oh, cool yeah not the same year but the same day. So that's it's hanging in his room. So well, let me ask you this: Is your son uh, musically inclined as well? Well, that is a that is a heartbreaking question. You see. Much like my father, not wanting my father builds a tennis court um, in an in a, in a, in a apricot orchard. Nobody in his family wants to play tennis. You know, oh, wow. my father builds a eight car garage. Nobody wants to work on cars. Mm. I have this jam room. My kid has has the most like the best natural talent of any kid I've ever seen. Yeah, doesn't care. Wow, doesn't care. It's okay. He doesn't care. Yeah. But it's it's like I used to have this thing where I would before he was born when I was I got together with my wife she had a lot of friends that had kids and so they would come over to our house and I would put them behind the drums and get them to do you know one two three four and give them a bass and bum 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 you know just get them to play sure. and that was like my favorite thing to do was like teach kids how to play rock and roll because when I was a kid you. You, you know, you, it's like nobody had a jam room, so that yeah. was that was like magic. You know, we just played football or basketball or whatever we did. But but if you could get in a room and just hit the drums and play a little electric guitar, that was like I don't know about you. I don't know exactly how young you are, but I can never tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm 45, and okay, so you're that's that's you're still in that you're still in that age group of like that still was a cool thing to do. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody's dad didn't have a man cave, right? Right, exactly. exactly. Kids nowadays, everybody's dad, like me, has, his, you know. So anyway, <laughs> so, so Jack just, he just, he has this great, he's got like Keith Richards kind of rhythm. He's so good. But And who knows, maybe one day it'll just hit him and it'll be a passion. You never know. The worst thing about it is that I, I always talk about it. So I got to, you know, shut my mouth. Right. <laughs> anyway, when I, when I saw, um, uh, I remember when uh, School of Rock came out. Right. And I remember thinking, man, they're going to, man, that's, that's my thing. You know, that's what I do. It took me like five minutes before I realized, no, Jack Black is the only guy I should be doing that. <laughs> it's like, it's like one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's totally like this thing that I used to do. Yeah. But it's so much better in that movie, him doing it, you know? Right. So, Right. Man, Lance, uh, I can't thank you enough for your time today, man. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. If you, and again, if you ever find yourself in North Carolina, right. by uh, Guitar Wishes, man, we'd love to have you here. Sound Factory Studios, uh, come on up. We'll have a good time. Here. Thanks so much to Lance for his time and uh, finally getting up with me. We had a lot of email and phone tag uh, to make that interview happen. Great guy, great musician, and a great actor. Again, go check out those movies if you haven't. And if you want to know more about us here at Guitar Wishes, check us out at guitarwishes.com. Check out our Facebook site. Be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel for content uploaded daily. For everybody here, I'm Lee. We're out. Cruising for a bruising.